Hi everyone, I'm Artis Gilgopoulos and this is my colleague Fotini Chami. We are IT teachers uh, from Greece and uh, we would like to present the success story of uh, how more than a thousand uh, Greek schools <coughs> migrated from Windows to open source uh, software. Specifically, the tools that uh, we used uh, were the Ubuntu or Ubuntu or Debian as the operating system. Uh, we, we used a package called LTSP, the Linux Terminal Server Project, to network the clients. Uh, we developed a, a software of our own, we call it Epotis, and the teacher uses it to monitor the student screens. And another software, which we initially called School Scripts, uh, that the system administrator uses to manage the computer lab uh, with the GUI. Uh, that project uh, is currently being uh, Debianized as part of a Debian outreach project and it will be uh, in Debian soon. And we also had to develop some uh, repositories uh, of our own to host some Greek educational software. Uh, let's start with uh, what a typical Greek school looks like. Uh, schools in Greece are somewhat small. They have about 50 to 200 students and maybe 15 to 30 teachers. And there's usually one IT teacher that doesn't have a lot of technical skills. And he's uh, usually maintaining one computer lab. Uh, that computer lab has one server uh, which is also used as a teacher workstation. And usually about 12 clients, uh, but uh, very diverse. They vary a lot. They can be old, like Pentium 3 computers, or new ones, like uh, Intel Core i5. Uh, but uh, usually schools have minimal budget for hardware and software. So that's uh, what we wanted to put open source into. Uh, in Greece, we have three levels of IT support for schools. At the school level, there's the IT teacher uh, whose main responsibility is to teach. So he can only dedicate a couple of hours per week to maintain the computer lab. And he usually doesn't have any Linux experience, so uh, we cannot assume that he can use the console. He can only use GUI programs to administer the school, the computer lab. At the prefecture level, uh, there's two to four IT teachers which uh, go to an office and serve as full-time sysadmins for about two to three hundred schools. Uh, those are more experienced, but uh, they usually uh, don't have any Linux experience either. And at the national level, there's a team of about five developers that test new solutions and write documentations and best practice guides. And schools can follow those on a voluntary basis. The decision is per school, there's nothing mandatory. And the teachers can communicate with the prefecture or the national team using forums or a help desk system or IRC or even VNC for remote support. Uh, the first uh, software that uh, we used in those schools is LTSP. This is the Linux Terminal Server project uh, which uh, can be used to netboot uh, thin clients. Thin clients are dumb terminals uh, without a disk that load the operating system from the network, from the server and after login, all the applications run on the server and the screen is transferred to the clients, like remote desktop. The protocol used there is uh, remote X. LTSP uh, uses a lot of other software to accomplish that. The list is to the right. And we only had to develop a couple of uh, our own software, like a display manager called LDM, and the file system for remote uh, CDs and USB sticks to make them remotely available called LTSPFS. 
Uh, there are many benefits uh, to using LTSP and Linux. Some of them are listed here. Uh, for example, financial benefits like we can reuse all desktop PCs as thin clients. So it's called that has Pentium 3, you can use those and only buy a new server and the gigabit suites with like uh, 500 euros and upgrade the computer lab. There are no software licenses fees involved and it needs uh, less personnel for support because we only have to maintain one installation. Only the server installation is maintained since the clients are disks. Uh, it's also it's easier to maintain because the software is open and we can adjust it to our needs. Uh, another benefit is that it can coexist with existing Windows installations. So if a school has a Windows-based computer lab, he can add the option to boot LTSP without uh, formatting any client, without touching the client disks. And the teachers can select to boot to LTSP or to Windows from the boot manager. And uh, it's a good thing that it doesn't have any viruses. So the national team heard about all those benefits and back in 2007 and decided to do a pilot uh, program. Uh, they bought 20 servers and installed Edubutu on them, 704, and sent them to 20 schools. And while those servers were pre-installed, it was still difficult to get LTSP up and running because the networking parts were rather hard. The server had two network cards and it needed a separate switch for the uh, Think clients. So the IT teacher had to rewire some stuff and to edit some configuration files. For example, the master image was cloned to those 20 servers and uh, network cards were named differently because of the cloning process and no one was able to fix it so this pilot program was a complete failure those schools were not able to run LTSP except for my school I was one of the test schools there and it took me about a couple of months to get LTSP running because I could only dedicate about a couple of hours per week to work on that uh, so that, that first contact was a failure in the next year, I was invited to join the national team and the first task, task that I thought should be done was to write an extensive guide about how to set up the operating system, how to install the DSP and allow, add all the necessary software and how to create user accounts. But while I documented all that, it was still hard because it involved the command line in several of the steps. And I didn't think that the other IT teachers would be able to use the command line. So that's uh, when we, I developed the first uh, version of the software we called School Scripts, uh, which at that point uh, where was a webtail interface, uh, where the teachers just selected the script to run at each phase chapter of the guide. So now I'm supposed to uh, create user accounts, let's run this script. Um, it involved a lot afterwards. It evolved, sorry. Uh, another thing that was missing at that time was that we had uh, more than a hundred Windows-based educational apps in Greece and we weren't able to use them in the Linux environment. Uh, so we had to create a Debian repository which uh, we managed with uh, Reprepo and we debianized uh, all those Windows applications. We created dev packages from them and put them to that repository. And we used uh, Wine or Java or HTML or Flash technologies to make them run under Linux. Uh, and we needed an additional repository and Voodoo PPA to ship newer versions of uh, some software that we needed, either ours or from others. Uh, that we couldn't backward. So here is a screenshot of how the uh, known education menu looked like uh, in a school that installed some Greek software for language and uh, geography and math. It was everything was integrated now, all the Windows applications. 
And in the next year, I was invited, invited by a Canadian LTSP developer to join the upstream LTSP team. And one of my first uh, contributions there was to add support for the proxy DACB protocol. Uh, that protocol uh, simplified the networking a lot. We no longer had to rewire anything. We didn't have to have two switches. Uh, the server did <coughs> only a single network act. It was more plug and play. Uh, I had support for that in LTSP, but I also had to ask other developers to add support for that, like the DNS mass developer or the IPC or the Win32 Logic developers. And I was very excited to see uh, that they implemented that in a matter of days. It was uh, an amazing experience. The result of that was, here's a screenshot, that existing uh, Windows-based computer labs could just run an application from Debian, win32loader.exe, and get a, a menu entry in the Windows bootloader to select between Windows and boot from the network. So it would became extremely easy to deal with. In the next year, uh, two LTSP developers, uh, Jonathan Carter and Stefan Graber, uh, both here, uh, added the first version of a plugin to support FAT clients in LTSP. Now we know that the LTSP thin clients are dumb terminals that load the operating system from the server and then run the applications on the server. That means that the server needs to be busy and that they consume a lot of network bandwidth. So gigabit is the minimum there. And this plugin added support for newer clients that would be again be diskless, diskless and would again load the operating system from the server, but they would run it with their own resources and their own CPU and uh, RAM. And which means that the applications run locally, there was no need for a BIFI server anymore, uh, but the client uh, specifications now would be the same as normal workstations. So they would need one gigabyte RAM and uh, a recent CPU, and of course they would be, still be diskless. Uh, that was ideal for our newer uh, school computer labs, so we invested a lot of uh, years on supporting that scenario, and now it's even the proposed uh, a method to install LTSP. Um, up until 2011, we were using a software called iDoc to manage the, uh, the user screens. So the teacher was able to see the uh, student screens and broadcast his screen, but that was uh, not really maintained. Uh, it was very bad. So uh, we decided to develop our own tool. Uh, we first developed it in Greek only. It allowed to wake the clients on LAN or log them out or shut them down. It allowed the teacher to broadcast his screen or to monitor the user screens or to send them messages. And uh, later on, uh, we internationalized it and uh, Vagrant uploaded it to Debian in 2011. Another milestone in our story was the introduction of a thing we badly named LTSP Plug and Play. Uh, in the classic LTSP uh, installation, we actually have to maintain two uh, operating systems. One is the server, and another is the root that we use uh, as the virtual disk for the clients. Uh, so the teacher had to install the software on the server uh, using Synaptic or some other package manager and he would then have to use the chroot command to enter that virtual disk for the clients and install the, the same software using the command line, which was difficult and sometimes it was buggy. Uh, so I had an idea to clone the server installation. Now the teacher would only use Synaptic, he wouldn't use the console at all, and at some point he would run a command that would clone the server installation and make the client image out of that. Uh, of course it would omit sensitive data like user accounts, and there's a drawback here that uh, the server and the clients need to build the same architecture, 
So we usually use uh, the 32 bit installations in order to be able to put our older clients. In 2012, uh, we faced another challenge that uh, the newer versions of GNOME and Unity uh, needed OpenGL to run. And OpenGL doesn't run well over the network, so uh, older Think clients uh, were, didn't run well at that point. Another desktop environment uh, called GNOME Plusback was suitable but uh, there was no distribution that defaulted to that desktop environment. Uh, so we actually had to create our own live CDs. And we took the opportunity to create uh, three, three different DVDs, one for its education level, one for primary schools with all the school software for primary schools, etc. And those became very popular. We no longer need that because we switched to Matic. At that point, our solution was uh, very stable and we didn't have any serious issues to solve, so we took a couple of years to promote it. Uh, the national team traveled to about 50 cities and educated about 2,000 IT teachers, which is about one third of all Greek uh, IT teachers. Uh, the education ministry uh, listened, uh, heard about the solution and it, uh, it actively started promoting open source. For example, in some laptops, uh, 120,000 laptops that they bought for students, uh, they asked that they also have Edubuntu in them, which was a success. And they even started mentioning LTSP and uh, FOSS in general in some school books. Uh, at that point, I also joined the local prefecture team and advocated LTSP there. So the result is that in my uh, prefecture, uh, about 80% of schools use Linux, which is large percentage. Uh, now, Fotini will tell us uh, her side of the story. So, I'm Fotini Tsiami and I work as an IT teacher in public schools in Greece. How my story about RTSP starts? In 2011, I attended a workshop in a conference in Greece where Alkis and his team presented the RTSP solutions. Since my school's lab was an old Windows 2000 based lab with expired licenses, and old Pentium 3 workstations, I thought that it was worth trying the solution. However, I was worried about technical issues that might accompany this new technology, but Alkis assured me that he would technically support me if I had installation problems and that if I would change my mind, I could return to my previous lab configuration without any additional effort, as no software would be installed in students' workstation. This made me feel confident enough to experiment. So, within a day, we installed a TSP, a pop disk, and school scripts in my school lab, and me and my students started enjoying many benefits. Modern software, without license problems, no viruses in the lab, students could get software at home. It's worth saying that my students adjusted very easily in the new environment. So the experiment with students succeeded. But what about <coughs> my colleagues? Were they willing to change the technology used? From 2013 to 2016, I also worked as a teacher trainer in some seminars in the prefecture. I decided to use an LTSP lab for the training courses. So, my colleagues had the opportunity to use the lab as students and see the benefits of LTSP above these school scripts, school scripts shared folders in action. The feedback was very positive. 
They were excited and one after the other wanted to implement the LTSP solution in their school. In 2015, I joined the national support, school support team and I worked on promoting and documenting the LTSP solution in Greece. What about me and Debian outreaching? In 2016, I heard about outreaching and thought that it would be a good idea to participate as an intern in an outreach project about internationalizing the part of the Greek solution that was missing from Debian. This was the school script software. Why would the community be interested in the school script software? What does it do? School scripts has evolved a lot since 2008 and now it is a very viable GUI based tool as it allows the school lab administrator to perform all the necessary tasks without using a terminal at any point. Some of its features, it automatically installs all dependencies and transforms the workstation into an LTSP server. It exposes all configuration and LTSP virtual disk management in GUI menus. It supports creation, mass creation and management of users and groups. It supports shared folders per group. Here you can see a screenshot from the LTSP Manager main window. In the left pane there is a list with the groups already created, while in the right pane you can see the users that belong in the selected A1 group. The school lab administrator can massively process these users, for example, remove them from the selected group. Here we see the dialogue that the school lab administrator uses in order to create student accounts per workstation for all student classes. Specifically, its class represents a group. Here we have six classes from A1 to C2 and we need 12 accounts for each class because we have 12 workstation, workstations in the lab. So, the lab administrator fills the first two fields and then when he presses the create button, 72 accounts will be created. I tried to give you a small taste of the LTSP manager features and now I will focus on some of the steps regarding its internalization process. Keep in mind that it was a Greek software, so it had to be translated to English and then localized to Greek. In order to translate the application dialogues from Greek to English, I used the Glade software. Let's focus on the example. This is the Glade environment and in the left pane you see the dialogue that students use for the sign-up process. While in the right pane you see the way that each label is translated. This screenshot is from the translating environment of Launchpad that I used for the localization process. Specifically, as you can see, Using this environment, we translated all labels and messages from English to Greek. All steps of my outreach project, project are explained in my blog. My mentors will upload the LTSP manager to Debian Experimental within August, and then I have to deal with troubleshooting and documentation. Of course, after the end of my project, I will continue using the software in schools 
I will continue suggesting improvements, reporting issues, presenting the LTSP solution in future seminars. Now some thoughts about my own Twitch experience. What does our Twitch experience mean, meant to me? It gave me the opportunity to get involved with the Debian community and contribute even though I am not an expert in coding. So, I got a very valuable experience and I feel that now I have the necessary self-confidence to inspire my students and colleagues to participate in FLOS communities. Many thanks to Debian Outreach for the sponsorship and of course to my mentors Alkis and Vagrant. In this last slide you can see a map with schools in Greece that implement the RTSP solution in computer labs and are already used Epoptis and school scripts. Thank you very much. Yes, first of all, congratulations on an excellent success story. It is really, really uh, good to see, and so that, that's wonderful. Uh, I just have a small question, and that is whether it would be feasible to merge the Epoptis uh, software and the LTSP manager software, since they both appear to be graphical uh, interfaces, and it would seem that there might be some kind of one-to-one -one relation that they could be merged. Is that possible? Initially, there were both uh, Epoptis and LTSP Manager was one software, the school script software. But we decided that to split them because the system administrator needs to do rights while the teacher doesn't need to do rights. So uh, we, dis we split them based on the access. Uh, if he wants to create users, uh, he needs to do rights. If he wants to edit configuration files, he needs to do rights. So those belong to LTSP manager. While if he just needs to shut down the clients and broadcast his screen, that belongs to Epoptis. Thank you. Yes. Uh, also, congratulations to the good success. Um, I remember I was in Greece in a, a meeting of the Debian EU group, I think it was 2005, so in last year. Is there some relation to Debian? Is this uh, because in Debian EU do similar things and so Or is it just some other project? I'm sorry, I missed some part. Uh, Compared to what? Debian EU, scholar Linux. Ah, Debian EU. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's no relation except that uh, Debian EU uses LTSP in, uh, to implement their own solution. Uh, we evaluated uh, school Linux and Debian EU at some point, but they target bigger schools. So essentially, they expect the system administrator there. Uh, while our, our rule of thumb was that uh, the administrator wouldn't use the command line at all. Uh, we have smaller schools, we have a person there that can only dedicate a couple of hours per week and he cannot use the console. So uh, we weren't able to use call Linux because of that restriction. Other than that, we have many tools that we both use and I think maybe they are using Epoptis and LTSP too. So, congratulations to you from my side. Ah, this man is fabulous, really. Uh, I wish we had that journey already. So, um, uh, so, speaking for the Debian Edu team, the main difference actually for the audience to sort of sort things out is that, as I understand, LTSP Manager is, is just creating a POSIX account on a local machine and then you attach machines to that, which is totally fine for the scale of schools so and classrooms that you have. Um, in Debian Edu, or the targeting schools are in Scandinavia and France and Germany, at least, probably more of this, uh, it's more like 1,000 students or 1,500 students per school. So we need to run an LDAP, which is the user management tool. And actually, the tendency in 
in Germany is quite going in the direction of doing the user management in a municipality, and that's also happening in Oslo, I think, for students. So, so that you run a central ID management system that's, of course, also based on LLAB, and then all the different systems attached to that. So it is, uh, I guess, a matter of use case. But my, my invitation from the Debian Energy team was actually to look at the software you have in your repositories or that you ship with your systems and actually maybe better sync um, uh, the, the, the meta packages so that you can also have those in Debian and that they're actually maybe even included in the Debian and task files that we use for creating our meta packages. So, so uh, the, the idea is always to be sustainable and to, to reduce duplicate work. So we definitely should sit together and see where we actually intersect uh, or have different solutions but we want the same outcome. So that's an invitation from my side that we stay in touch or get in touch closer and, um, and, and do more cooperation. Yeah, I'd love to. Thanks a lot uh, for the invitation as well and uh, we'll surely uh, sit at the table with you and uh, talk about all that. Yeah. Although I don't think uh, the meta packages would be useful as they only contain Greek software which is in Greek for Greece uh, but uh, some software surely can, uh, some meta packages we can create that involve non greek software, of course. Thanks a lot. Hi, my name is Fabian. Um, I live here in Montreal and I had the opportunity to meet uh, these people yesterday. <coughs> we spoke about how the Quebec education system uh, it's basically managed by a political structure and even criticizing local decisions at the school level may get you in trouble in terms of your uh, employment environment. So it makes it very difficult to escalate any, um, for example, the, the way that you showed that you had these workshops where you used the LTSP and then got teachers interested. The mere fact that a teacher would show this to someone higher up would probably question their competence and then get them in trouble and so on. So two things that I find very intriguing, one that normally make people dismiss this kind of solution technically is the uh, inability to run Windows applications and perhaps your Greek applications are not going to be of much use here in Quebec but I'm very very interested in the method that you use and it doesn't seem too clean or nice <laughs> packaging wine with Java and uh, maybe there's legal issues here or I don't know. I'm just interested in the technical side of it and I just want you to remember it's kind of thinking out of the box that I never really thought about. We just say this doesn't run here or it's difficult to install wine and whatever. It never occurred to me that we could put together some kind of package and, and never mind repository. So that's something very intriguing to me. The second thing and maybe uh, the question part of my uh, talk here is you talked about internationalization and so if I understand this correctly you had to translate your stuff to English and then back to Greek, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And you used Launchpad to do that, right? Yes. Does that mean that people from outside your uh, technical support structure participated? Did the teachers participate, parents, other people, or just the technical people? No parents participated. Uh, this is a job that I do with a lot of guidance from my mentors. So essentially, we set up translations in the translations environment in Lunchpad. We did that for both the bodies and for now for LTSP manager. Uh, we do our part translating, localizing back to Greek, uh, but there are others that uh, translate it to their own uh, uh, localities. Uh, for example, the bodies has been translated in 40 languages. And uh, right now, uh, LTSP manager, without being in Debian yet, without having the format released, is already translated in Czech. And I don't know where I my book. The environment is open, people can just go there and translate it, and we pick automatically pick up the translations and put them in the dead package. Alright, so there's very low barrier.
to translate it. And that was my next question, is this outside of Greece? So if you don't speak French yet, maybe I can give you some French lessons and right. we can work together. <laughs> Thank you. you can just uh, sign up your lunch bud and uh, translate it from English to French. And in the next uh, release, you have it localized. <coughs> Thank you very much. I would also like to mention, take the opportunity of your advice, what you asked, to mention an example in uh, South Africa last year, where they heard about all that uh, solution. And while we were lucky in Greece in that uh, schools can decide from, for themselves uh, what to put in their computer labs, Windows or Linux, uh, they had a central management for that. Uh, but uh, I don't know exactly its title, but somewhere below the uh, Minister of Education invited us and uh, we presented the solution and so they decided uh, they were thinking about uh, implementing NTSP in all the province uh, there. So maybe you can find some central contact uh, here too. It doesn't have to be per school if uh, that's not how it works here. So I'll share this for, uh, for the record. Uh, I was part of uh, the elections to be sitting at the school board as a as an elected person, and essentially in Quebec province, our taxes pay those salaries. And there's a very, very strong lobby of a lot of people working actively with the sole mission to block free open source software here in Quebec province. We've had public inquiries on construction and health, and our mayors uh, being uh, indicted and not going to prison. There's a huge issue with corruption. And honestly, there's no way we can compete with big companies like Google, um, uh, Microsoft, and Apple. And so the Chromebooks, iPads, and essentially Minecraft Edu, if you haven't heard about that, it's the way for Microsoft to capture young accounts. Uh, it's a whole mess. It's a huge mess here because now we have three proprietary companies competing. So there's not even going to be one standard even if it's proprietary for our kids to grow into. Um, I'm trying to change that, but uh, <laughs> the challenge is really huge here, and essentially it's political, right? But uh, yeah, there may be a few ways to uh, change that. We're looking into that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, yeah, so uh, you produced this amazing system, and you clearly proved that it works, uh, at least for Greece. Um, are you, uh, would you make yourself available if uh, other people in other places around the world were interested in what you've done and uh, to show them uh, how you did it and maybe give a workshop or something? That's an excellent question and I'd like to point at this point that uh, the national team is necessary for the support of the whole infrastructure. Uh, three to five de developers are enough to support thousands of schools, but if those uh, three to five developers don't work for some reason, uh, then uh, the whole infrastructure collapses. Uh, it wouldn't be hard to pass the know-how uh, for uh, Debianizing Windows applications or uh, setting up all that infrastructure to other countries that have similar needs. And we would gladly do so if we are invited. Um, one other question, have you ever thought about actually um, distributing the diskless set client and thin client images across the country? So you have a couple of separate servers and, and these, these images don't have to be maintained in the school but you actually sort of hook the system together and then you have a like 100% in quotation marks reliable image. Um, on the other hand, the contract quest counter question is, have you problems with broken images actually that, that are running in the schools and they have flaws because they are not 100% identical all over the country? Uh, so uh, we have some meta packages, one for, for example, it's called Gymnasio, which is the high school. And if a school is uh, high school, he can, uh, they can just select that from Synaptic and get all the, the recommended applications. 
Now some teacher may decide that he wants uh, an additional application, he can just go to Synaptic and add it. So we, cannot, we don't want to maintain uh, images globally. We just provide meta, meta packages, uh, like collections for all the software that is available there. Uh, since the uh, teacher maintains everything from uh, Synaptic or any other package manager, uh, the breakouts Breakage is uh, similar to the breakage we see at homes uh, in a simple workstation installation, which means uh, about one out of 200 schools, uh, the IT teacher there may decide to remove an essential package and have it uh, broken, uh, which uh, we can uh, easily repair with a live CD. Uh, they come for remote support, first in IRC and then we get control with the Epoptis uh, remote support feature that is based in VNC. Uh, so uh, for a thousand schools we spend maybe an hour per day for support only. We don't need a lot of support. Thank you. Thank you too. I think it's time for the group photo. Oh, yeah. Another question? No, I just wanted to announce the group photo, so please just grab all your stuff, get out to the uh, out, left, and to the left, parking lot to the other guys. Yeah.